and welcome to another episode of our Irish Country Life. Except, as you can tell, I'm not in Ireland. I am now in sunny Cyprus, the island of love. And I have a very special thing to share with you guys today. I have been very fortunate when I came first to Cyprus to have two inherited grandmothers, both of my yayas. One was called Galiobi and the other one is called Yayanina. Galiobi has since passed away, who was a wonderful lady who taught me all of the Greek food that I know today. And also my Yayanina, who is still alive. And just the other day I was round with her and many years we had a thing she used to call Charlotta. And we used to love to go around for our Greek coffee and our piece of Charlotta when we knew she'd made it. So I wanted to make sure that she shared this recipe with me. Although she told me many times how it was made, I wanted to see her make it for myself. So we spent the afternoon together last week making some Cyprus Charlotta. And I hope that you'll try it. You'll adapt the ingredients to what's available to us because obviously we wouldn't be able to get everything in Ireland. And you'll have fun with this recipe. It is really, really delicious and a wonderful thing to know and have. And it's great for dinner parties. It's great for a Sunday afternoon dessert after your roast dinner. And hopefully you'll all love it. So let's get cracking. Let me tell you what we, we need. First of all, you need a Pyrex dish. Again, depends on how many people you're making it for. When she makes it, she makes it a huge Pyrex dish. Today, I'm just going to make it in a small four to six portion uh, trifle dish. We will also have some sponge cake. It can be either here. This one we have is a marble cake, which is what she used to make and she used. But you can buy trifle sponges or you can buy the Zavedido fingers, the ladies' fingers that you can get ready in the supermarket. You can use them as well. Here we will use the traditional Cypress sweet that goes with Greek coffee, which you would have seen in one of my previous videos. We have gligon, which is basically orange peel, which has been boiled and soaked in sugar and made into a syrup, and walnuts, which were freshly picked walnuts. They were then boiled with sugar and spices Um, cloves, I think, and cinnamon, and they are then put into a jar. And I will just show you one of the walnuts. So it's just a round ball like this. So it's actually the fresh walnut before they would ever be dried and made into the lovely syrup. We will be using some of the syrup today. And as you can see, I've prepared already some chopped walnuts, and I've also sliced some of the orange um, gligon as well. The yeah. other thing you will need is some chopped almonds or in my case i had some whole almonds i didn't have chopped almonds and a hammer which you could do lots of damage with a hammer and i literally just put them into a bag and i hammered them to chop them up because i don't have all the equipment here in cyprus of what i have back home in ireland so a hammer and some chopped uh, almonds you will need some sugar some corn flour and some milk two eggs some vanilla essence and a little drop of brandy. Cyprus brandy I'm using, but in Ireland, if I'm making it, I will probably use sherry or Irish brandy. Now, let's start by assembling the sponge. We'll do the sponge first, because once we start making the cream, you have to stand over the cream whilst it thickens on the stove, or otherwise you're likely to burn the cream. We don't want burnt cream. So we're going to start off by layering the bottom of our pirate's dish with our sponge. So like I said, here I'm using marble cake because my yaya Nina used to make her own marble cake and whatever was left over before it would go off, she would freeze it so that she would have some marble cake for to make her Charlotte whenever she wanted to. If I was making this in Ireland, I would probably use a Madeira, um, a Madeira sponge. So we're just going to put one layer of sponge at the bottom. And I'm going to cut a little bit just to fill in the corners so that everybody gets some sponge in their charlotta. And there's a little piece left to have with the Greek coffee later. Now, what we will put on top of that is we will pour into a little jug, we will pour some brandy. As much or as little as you like. There is no science behind this. We will then pour some of the syrup from our gligon. So again, if I was making this in Ireland at home, I would probably use as my fruit 
I would use maybe a tin of peaches or a tin of pears. And I would use some of the syrup from that. Okay. And a little bit of the syrup from the garadagi, which is the walnut one. Isn't my Greek wonderful? After 30 years, it should be a lot better than what it is. I've been very lazy learning my Greek. However, I've learned lots of Greek recipes and how to, Greek, to cook Greek food. So the fact that I can't speak it, but what people don't realize is I understand everything. So that can be great fun. If only you could just smell the brandy from this. It's absolutely amazing. So we've just stirred the brandy and the syrup together. And now I'm just going to give a drizzle over the sponge. So it would be very similar to if you were making like a sherry trifle, but you wouldn't be making it with jelly. I said to my sister-in-law, shall I adapt the recipe for us Irish onions so that we too? She said, no, it wouldn't be a Charlotte and it wouldn't be Yaya's Charlotte. So I went with it and I thought, okay, we will stick to Yaya's Charlotte. So it just shows you how adaptable this recipe is because when I made it with Yaya last week, she actually made it with a mandarin. How would you say it? Like a liqueur. She made her own mandarin liqueur. Far too complicated. We do not need to go into all of that. It did taste rather wonderful. Okay, so on top of our sponge, we will now sprinkle some of our chopped up garadagi, which is our walnut. Again, this can be as much or as little as you like. There is no science behind it. One of the reasons why when I learn a recipe from Cyprus, I like to watch the person make it. Um, because then that way I get a true reflection of exactly what goes in and where and at what stage. And that's why I'm showing you in detail this recipe today. We will save a little bit for the top to decorate the top. But just ensure that everybody gets a little bit of the fruit with their slice of charlotte. And the same with the orange. I've probably prepared far too much of the glycon for this size trifle. But anyway, we will, we will still eat it. We will have it with our Greek coffee later. So now we've finished the base for the charlotte. I'm going to leave that aside and we're going to get on with making the cream. And in here, I'm going to put four glasses of milk. So your milk of choice, whatever it is, full fat milk, semi skim milk, whatever. Obviously, it's better if it's full fat milk. Then we're going to add, for every glass of milk, we're going to add a tablespoon of sugar. So one, two, three, four. And we're also going to add a tablespoon of corn flour. And this will be our thickener. One. Two, oh, three. And I've just got it all over the place. Four. Okay, so that's our sugar and our corn flour. And I'll de dust myself down. Also, into this, we're going to add some vanilla essence. So, just a couple of drops of vanilla essence. And two eggs. And the reason for the two eggs is for to give it that lovely creamy color. And they all just go into the pot and we will dissolve them with the milk and it will all dissolve together once it starts to come to the boil and thicken. Now you can see in there, it's a nice creamy color as opposed to a very stark white color from the milk. Once all those ingredients are combined, we are then going to pop it onto the stove and we're going to cook it until it comes to that blippy boil. 
stirring it continuously. Do not leave it or it will stick to the bottom of the pan and you will get that horrible burnt taste. The secret to making this cream is slow consistency. Do not try to get it to boil, no matter how impatient you are. Make sure you stay with it and you keep stirring it all the time. I will show you what the consistency should be like when I've boiled it. But you don't need to stand there and watch me boiling milk. See you in a moment. Okay, so the milk has been on the stove for about between three and five minutes and it started to thicken up and it started to go that blip blip. I'll just show you now if Chris comes in closer with the camera. You can just see how it's just starting to do that blip blip boil. And that's it, it's done. Switch it off and it's ready to come back to the table. Okay, so now our cream is cooked. While it's still hot, you don't need to let it cool down. We're going to just carefully pour it over the top of our base. Now look at that. So you just level off the top and then you want to get rid of your... And now we're ready to sprinkle our chopped nuts over the top. Remember how I chopped these? I literally just got the hammer out and hammered them, smashed them to pieces. And actually they've come up lovely and coarse and, and really nice. So just going to sprinkle all them over the top. And once we've put our generous topping of almonds, which is really nice. This Charlotte is coming. Do you believe this is the first time I've made this? This is the first time I've made it because Yayanina made it the other day. Now, so we put our chopped nuts and then we're going to just, going to just make it look nice and pretty by putting our ligon in a nice design. So now I've just finished decorating the top of the charlotte ensuring that everybody's going to get a nice piece. Now that's hot, so obviously you can't pop that into the fridge just yet. So you leave that to cool down, and then we'll pop that into the fridge for several hours to set. So come back and join me where we're going to have some lovely Cypress Greek coffee and some lovely Yaya Nina Charlotta. I am so happy that I got her to show me this recipe because I've been having it for years and years and years and never knew how she made it. Although she explained, like I said, it wasn't quite the same as spending the afternoon and making it with her. I'm and very, very fortunate to have had my two lovely yayas. Yaya is the Greek word for granny because both of my grannies died before I was born. My mother's mother and my father's mother both weren't alive when I was born. So I inherited two yayas and it's wonderful to have learned so much from them from even a different country. It's amazing. I'm feeling quite emotional and sad, but I'm not really, I'm very happy. So there you are, Cyprus Charlotta. And if you have any questions or anything you want to know, then you can ask me in the comment section. We will adapt the recipe to whatever you can find, but it really is truly a magnificent dessert to have after dinner. So don't forget, like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon for another video.
lovely piece of Cyprus Charlotte with beautiful cup of Greek Cyprus coffee and the cups are exquisite and they again belonged to Maya Yelena. I've always loved them. She used to serve coffee to me not very often in this one but whenever she did I always brought a smile to my face. So I asked my sister-in-law could I possibly have these cups. So thank, thank you for them. watching and until next time from the island of love that is Cyprus. Take care and see you soon. Bye bye. Mm. Charlotte.